that we're learning how to enforce a uh, uniform coding style, like in a situation where you're working with other developers on a project, let's say you're working remotely, you will want um, to enforce a coding style, like you want everybody's coding style to be almost the same. So there are certain things you do to ensure that. And again, is everybody will have a development branch. So you want a the branching and, and the coming styles to be to be uniform. So you have to like call for a meeting, discuss with your team how you want that to be, and all of that. So in our case, I've been doing something, I've been doing, I've been committing to a branch, our code camp branch with a unique style and then how I branch. Let's see if we have any, I'm currently on the main branch because this is a new um, repo and you can see if I type av uh, autocomplete enabled on in my text, uh, sorry, on my command line. So if I try to type git branch, you see there's an autocomplete of cs slash feature slash express start manager. So in creating branches, Let's assume I'm working with um, other developers and we all have development branches or we, if I want to create a, a new feature, I'll create a branch for that feature. So for instance, like for this Express Task Manager, it's a feature and I started it with a feature, it's the feature tag and then the name of the branch actually. So if I want to branch, let's say, my name is Christopher so well, I just, abbreviated it cs cs slash and let's say it's documentation i want to add documentation to application i will do something like docs and dash let's see um let me see add readme file like so let's say it's a feature i want to add a readme file and this is a branch, or I'll say add, um, let's see, documentation. Add documentation like this. So after doing this, we have to call for a meeting and we let others know that when creating a branch, this is how you have to go about it. If, if, if it's for test, you just write like your name, Let's say if your name is something else, let's say T F slash or something like that. So it says C S slash. Let's say it's for test. I want to write unit test. I'll say test. Then dash. Um, login unit test. Let's say you want to test the login feature. You want to write the unit test for the login feature. So this is how you go about it. So that you know that the first thing, oh, whose name is this? Oh, Christopher Sesson, uh, CS, followed by test. Okay, this is actually test. This branch deals with test. He created this branch to run test for the login feature. That's great. And if you want to commit, let's say you are done and you want to do git commit and you come if it's for test, you see test. There's a tag. This the add unit test for login feature. Something like this. And this M stands for message. For dogs, you see dogs. Add read 
be file like this. Right? So let's say you it's, it's called, like you change something in the package or JSON. Your package JSON that does not affect your application in any way. So all you have to do is say call. Let's actually something that you know uh, it does not affect your app, but it's, it's very important for you like an upgrade or you change um a package or something like that. So you call um upgrade. You say upgrade um Prisma. Upgrade Prisma. If it's a Prisma client, say upgrade Prisma slash client or upgrade Prisma. And immediately you commit this, the changes will be visible on GitHub. So you have to I can make it more like more readable. You can say upgrade upgrade Prisma to version 5.5.3. Like this so that on seeing the commit message, um we know that yes, you've upgraded uh, Prisma to version 5.5.3 and the change will be visible on GitHub once you assign a reviewer. Okay, so we'll be doing this. Uh, we don't need to talk much about this, so I think we know. And by doing this, once you see a commit message, you know, oh, this is the tag, this is what the person did, this is the person's name, and this is what he did in this way. So you just, view the commit and then try to compare it. That's great. Come over to, oops. We're done with the first item on the list, enforcing uniform coding style with git commit styles and branching. Okay. And the second on this is enforcing development practices with Prettier and ESLint. Okay, so we want to add Prettier in our code. So what does Pritia does? Um, let's visit Pritia's. What is this? Okay. No, let's visit uh, Pritia. Pritia. As, as the name implies, it actually makes your code pretty. It formats your code. Like you add rules, you add rules on how you want your code to be formatted, indentations, um, trailing commas, whether you want to use tabs or you want to use um whether you want to use tabs or you want to use spaces or anyhow you want you wish to do it, but pretty just formats your code and we'll be seeing just in a minute how pretty does that. Uh, but first of all, we will learn how to install Prettier and try to set up Prettier to match with our needs. So in installing Prettier, as you can see here, we are first install Prettier locally. If you're using yarn, you are yarn add, that is a dev exact Prettier. If you're using PMPM, you have PMPM add like this, or using NPM. So what we actually do is, we will come down to our, let's just copy this. Then come to our terminal, paste it here, then hit enter. And then we'll allow it to install. While it's installing, okay, we successfully installed Preacher. So what next? manually create a file or oh, yeah. I'm using Mac so I'll just do something like touch RC like this and then we have our pretty RC here so this is where we write um we format our picture we write 
our, our let's see the commands how we want Peter to format our code. So in us here, yeah, I'll be showing you how we're going to be writing this training commas. Let's add first of all add bracket spacing. Bracket spacing. Add it, we set it to true. But before we add this, let's come down to here in our script. If we want Peter to format our code, we have a test. So let's add Peter. Yeah, right. Right. You'll come over and see MPX Twitter. That, that's right. Everything that is pretty should format every file in our project. If you want to check, you do something like Twitter. Check. MPX with your guys that check everything. Add a comma here. Okay, so now if you run npm run with your check. Okay, so now Peter is checking our project. You can check all the files in our project. Okay, invalid. Bracket spacing value explicit true or false, but received true. Okay. This shouldn't be a string, it should be a boolean of true. Like this. Okay, let's format it again. Let's check not format actually. Okay, checking formatting package JSON index, middleware, coaster issues found in three files. You don't pretend to fix. Okay, so it has found um, issues in three files. So now we want to fix it. npm run picture right, like so. So now Peter is formatting all of our files. If you take note, Peter is also formatting our build file. Our I mean, the objects in this build folder. I will see that just in a minute. Public abscesses, docs. You can seem to find it here. Okay, so now let's check again, npm. Preacher, npm run, Preacher check. I want to check if there are any errors because Preacher formatted that project for us. Okay, as you can see, all, let me just zoom in a little bit. I forgot to zoom in. Now we can see all my files use Preacher code style. That means all our specification, what we specified in the um, Preacher RC files match matches what matches our coding style. So now we want to add single quotes. As you can see here, we are using double quotes in our project. We're using double quotes here. So let's try to enforce single quotes. Single quotes. I'll go with true. What else? Tab width. Okay, tab width should be. Tab width should be two. And um, use tabs. You want to use tabs for spacing, or you want to use um, spaces. And semicolon, semicolon, is to true. 
Okay, come here. So let's leave like this. Bracket spacing. We want. Let me just show you this in. Do you have any brackets here? We want spaces in our brackets. Uh, I don't see this. Any file? We show you this. Okay, we want spaces in between the content in our bracket and the bracket that is um, enclosing our content. And the single quote, we want to ensure we're using single quotes in our application. As you can see here, we're using double quotes, but we will enforce that in just a minute. And the tab width, we're using the tab width of two. We can change this to four, and let's change it to four, like this. We're still using two. You see that in just a minute. Use tabs. We're not using tabs for spaces like tabs. We're using, uh, we're using, oops. We're using normal spaces like space bar to space at work. And, and now we have tab width of four. And if I try to save this one here, we also have tab width of four here because we set our tab width here to be four. Now let me change it to two. We we'll have two. And if I save it, if I come here, now we have tab width of two. You can even change it to six, depending on your use case. You can change to six, come here and save this, and we have tab width of six. But I think this is just uh, too much. If you change it to like four, four like this. Okay, if you come down here, save your file, uh, we have tab width of four, one, two. That is, um, Two spaces, two spaces per tab. If I say, if I change it to tab width of four, means four spaces per tab. If you press your tab, it will add four spaces. And now, I think let's run npm run prettier right like this. And then we run npm on picture check. Let's picture check our work. Check if, okay, all my files are using picture code style. Okay, that's great. So we've added picture to our, our projects and it's working very fine. So what next do we want to do? Okay, we've added picture. And now we want to add ES links. We want to add ES links to our project. So how do we add ES links? Okay, this is another interesting thing. And we'll get to where we're going to in a minute. You see how this is helpful when working with uh, different developers on the same project. So in order to add ES links, let me come to my extensions and search ES links. Um, I think this this one yes install this um, um this plugin this yes this extension yes link extension by integrating JavaScript VS Code thirty million three hundred twenty five fifty five four four download install it your VS Code and then come down here after installing it you can just run the command mpx Sorry, es links dash init. We hit enter. It's showing you here. You can also run this command directly using npm init es link slash config. Now let me zoom in a bit so that we we'll see what's going on here. As you can see, how would you like to use es link to check syntax only? to check syntax and find problems, to check syntax, find problems and enforce code style. So in our case, we want to check syntax, find problems and enforce code style. And we use arrow keys to select the last one, hit enter. So there's another question, what type of modules does your project, project use? So our project normally uses, we're using um, import slash, uh, Export that is the ES module, JavaScript modules. We're not using common JS, we're using JavaScript modules. We hit enter. Which framework does your project use? Is it React or Vue.js? We're using none of these. Hit enter. 
Does your project use TypeScript? No, it enter. We're not using TypeScript. Where does your code run? In the browser or Node? It runs not in the browser. Node. Select Node. Hit enter. Use a popular style guide. Answer questions about your style. Okay, let's use this popular style guide. We use A, B, and B, or use standard, or use Google, or use XO. I think A, B, and B is the popular one, and I prefer A, B, and B. I've been using it for, for quite some time now. So we select A, B, and B. What format do you want your config file to be in? Is it JavaScript, YAML, or JSON? I think I prefer JSON. So hit enter JSON. Checking peer dependencies or ES linked. Uh, would you like to install them now? That is the ES linked config A, B, and B letters and ES linked all these um, plug um, plugins. Then you hit yes. You want to install them now? Are we using npm yarn or pmpm? We're using npm. Hit enter. So now all these dependencies are being installed. The ES linked config A, B, and B base. Yes, linked version 7.32.0 or version 8.2.0. The yes, linked plugin import version 2.25.2. All these are being installed, and it seems that taking a little time. Let's just wait for it to install. And while this is installing, we can actually create. If there are any files you don't want Prettier to format, you can create on a file that Prettier. Oh, then you add them. In our case, we don't want Prettier to format node modules. We don't want you to format our build folder. And what else? I think that's all. Now, Peter will ignore node modules and the build folder. What else? We don't want Peter to format our docs. We don't want Peter to format our docs env file. Okay, so Peter will ignore these folders, the node modules folder, the build folder, docs, and the env file. So now this is our Peter. You can add more rules here. What's how you want Peter to format your code. And then you can add more folders or files you want Peter to actually ignore while formatting. Okay, so we are done installing ES links. Wow, wow, wow. This is great. We are done installing ES links. So what do we want ES link to do for us? We want, we actually, what, what, we want to actually link our code find problems and then fix them. Okay. So what we want to do now is we add our ES links RC JSON file. It's already added for us because we've specified the JSON. We want to use JSON file, not YAML or, or JS. So now we have a JSON, a minimized JSON file in our ES links RC JSON. These are the the extent we have one extension here, A, B, and B base environment as we have yes, 2021 true browser true. But we're not using the browser, we can change it to node. You can see node true and then remove this browser, like so. Extent A, B, and B. Then we add one more option and change this to array. You can add as many extensions as you wish. We'll do that in a minute. ECMAScript version. We have latest source type module because we're using module and not common JS. So in the rules here, we can specify some rules. Let's say, for instance, we we'll say no console. And if you say off, if you select off, if you log it in on the console in your app, there will be no warning or no error. But in this case, we want to get a warning. And let's come back to our index.js. Index.js file. Great. 
So now we're having a lot of warnings here. But if you hover over this, you see something like unexpected console statement. The console module will, will plot back up. Now let's go back to our ES link. This if I remove this, save the file, come back to your index.js file. It's I'm having a lot of errors here. Okay. Okay, and this is because of the base. As you can see, we have single quotes here automatically. Because of the single quotes we specified in our prettier file. Let's say semi true single quote. Let's say false. Now I change it to false and we have double quotes in our application. So once we actually want to use single quotes, we come back to our prettier file and change single quote to true. And if you come down here and save this file, you can see that we have single quotes. This actually is, we're having some errors here that we'll fix in just a minute. See, use our file extension JS for this, this story. Okay, so if you want to fix this, we want to say quick fix. We want to dis disable, disable input slash extensions for the entire file. So that, because if you don't add this JS extension, your application will not work, you get errors. So we want to disable this error from the ABMB ESLint base. Um, command. We want to disable it so that we can be able to use uh, extensions when importing our files. So we click here. And if you come on top here, you see ENL disabled import slash extensions. So we disable that. And as you can see, this use tricks. If you come and hover over use tricks unnecessary inside of modules, expect a new line before use tricks directive. Now, if you come here, fix this problem, that will be automatically removed. Then we have other problems here also we need to fix. Now, if you hover over this one, what's the problem? Expected exception block, space, or tab after two, four, slash. So we fix this, fix the space. Okay. So now this one is telling that use object structuring, fix it, fix the problem. Okay. So now what we we'll do here, we'll copy this one. We'll cut it actually. Cut this, comma, paste, come here, cut this. Comma paste and then cut this one and go with this one also to save it. So that error is actually gone. Come down here. As you can see, expect an indentation of two spaces but found four. Now, if you open your prettier, prettier specifies four, but it's like ENS lit is expecting two. So what we want to add here is Airbnb. We change this to an array and then we we'll add prettier to these extensions and then save it. Now, if you come to this file, the, er the error is gone because we want A, B, and B to use our prettier file here to use this to format our code. So it's not using it. So once you add it, the error is gone. So if you come to our file now, we're actually logging this to the console and we're not getting any errors. So let's come to our ES links. Uh, in, as I'll see JSON file here and make some changes. Let's see. No, no console. No, let's see. Let's select error. Save it. If you come to your index file. Okay. No consoles. Okay. We're supposed to get an error here, I think. Oh. Oh, we're getting nothing. Okay, let me just see. Okay. ABMB base prettier and our prettier file. I think I'm missing anything. 
no console one. Let's add another no duplicates imports. It actually be an error. So let's come back to our index.js file and add import express from express. We're supposed to get an error here, but then we are not getting any errors. So what's the problem? Or is it because you change it to me? This is browser to let me remove this one. Ah, so this is now misbehaving. So what is actually the problem? I can actually add another um, script here for Max. ES links format everything like this. And if you see MPM, let's try to format our code and see something. Let's try the time, clear the terminal first. MPM run max. Okay, so what is our Oops, something went wrong? Yes, it's okay. Let's remove this first and let's see what we've got. Aha. Uh -huh. So our code is okay. We didn't put the, the extension. Now we have an error. Identifier express has already been declared. Yes, link is now giving us this error. We have other errors here. What's this error saying? Quick fix. Sorry about that. Okay, so we fix that one. What is this one saying? Quick fix spaces fix event. Let's save it. It is complaining about the indentation. Okay, for now, let's just come down here to our picture file and change it to two. Come to our index. Okay, now we fix the problem. Actually, if you want to use, you want ESLint to use the configurations in your Pritia file, you, you install the Pritia extension and add it to as a second item in this array, Pritia, like this. Uh, ESLint to use it to format your, your code. Okay, so now ESLint is using what is in our file. Now, if you go down, as you can see, the console namespace console, we don't expected console statements, unexpected console statements. So if you come to our ESLint file here and change this to error, now if you check your index file, what you are getting here is an error and not a warning. But I want it to be an, I can actually, let's leave it as an error because we don't want developers leaving console logs in our code base. So we want to disable for this one. We just want only this one so that we, we know we start our app in, in development. We know that our app is up and running. So let's change this to disable no console for this line. Only this line, not the entire file, this line. You can see ESLint disabled, sorry, ESLint disabled next line, no console. And that is what we want. Now we're not getting that error. Now if you decide to remove this, we still get the error. We will disable this, you know, we no longer get the error. Okay. So we've added ESLint and if you like, let's say you don't want ESLint to 
track our index file or any other file, you just come here and you add that ES limit ignore. You say ES means you ignore node modules. Our build folder, our docs folder, and our source slash index.js file. Now let's come to this index.js file. I will need to see if our rule is working. Okay, so now we can remove that line and we don't have any problem with this because we instructed ES links to ignore our index.js file, as you can see. But only the index.js file, any other file, ES links will work. But we don't want that. Let's remove this one. Come back to our index.js file. And now we're having this error. I don't undo this. Yes. So now we're up and running with ES links. Now we want to add, we want to actually enforce these changes because developers will still mess up our code with our code base. But we want this to be enforced. We want to, if you like you don't follow this process, like you don't follow the rules, you don't code according to our style. Then you get errors. You won't be able, able to commit your code to GitHub. So how do we do that? Let's go back to our picture here. Yes, lit and other linters. We are using yes, lit. Then we want to install Husky, and it's would you see just in a minute what Husky does. So install npm install save the Husky. We want to install Husky and lit staged. So lit staged will format uh, our code in a staged environment. So let's install that first. Save the first key list saved. And it's taking a little bit of time. Now, git hooks. Let's read this a bit. In addition to running Preacher from the command line, Preacher write, checking formatting is continuous integration and running Preacher from your editor. Many people like to run Pritia as a pre-commit hook as well. This makes sure all your commits are formatted without having to wait for your CRD to finish. Great. So you can actually take a look at Husky. Let's open it in a new tab. Here, install Husky and all of that. You can look at Husky's, Husky's documentation. And let me just copy the link and leave it for you so you can um, take a look at the documentation. Let's, let me open the link stage for you to copy it, paste it for you. Here, you can see link stage. You can see all its uses and what it's used for. Let me just copy the link to paste it for you. Like this. Okay, so what is the NPM? Let's check if this has finished installing. Okay, we're done installing Husky and lead stage. So the next command is npx Husky install. So we run npx Husky install. As you can see, Husky git hooks installed. Now if you check here, you will see, let's close everything that's open, close off. You come up, you see Husky. Inside of Husky, you see Husky SH. So this is actually the script that's running all of those. And make sure you don't modify this. Just leave it as it is. I will see how this works in a minute. So come back and we'll copy. This is actually setting this in our script. You can actually run this command or you can come to your script and add a prepare in your package JSON and in your script here, you add a prepare Husky prepare or something like that. But let's just come here and run npm package set script that prepare is equal to, you know the script is uh, it's an object. So we want to set the prepare to this value, Husky install. So we copy this, come to our terminal, 
clear the terminal, test it, and you hit enter. Now, if you look at your packages, you see prepare Husky install. Okay, so we'll come back again. Now we want to add Husky, um, we want to add the pre commit, uh, pre commit hook to our, our Husky file. We want to add mpx init stage. And then after running mpx add this to our pre commit hook. As our pre commit hook, we want to add it. This. Now let's pause more open our Husky folder. Now come to pre commit. In our pre commit, we see mpx mint staged. And we'll see how this works in a minute. Clear your terminal. We'll copy this. This stage from here like this. Bring it to a package JC file. And then at the end, at the end, think it's here. We'll add it here. Add a comma, add it here. Need state. Pitya, as that's right, ignore or non. This. Okay, so now we are done. So let's run npm run format to test our ES needs. Oops, did you mean this? Okay, the next one is npm run formats. Oh, found how many errors? Test JS plus plus used and use it is defined but never used. Oh, as you can see, all the errors in your code will be listed for you. And this is because of the unexpected use of file extension JS in middleware, all these things will be listed for you. Okay. Now we can actually come to our ESLint file, ESLint JSON, and you can add a rule here to allow this, to allow you to use the JS extension. But I'll allow that, I'll allow you to do that by yourself. No duplicate imports, and you can add many, many rules here that you want your code to use. Okay, so now we can see our error. So before committing your code, you run this and then make sure you go ahead and check your errors. Okay. Now let me show you one thing again here. In our host script, we commit to click on your own, right? NPN run format. After, okay, let's run it before we begin on the list stage. So now let's go ahead and play this. Git add, git commit, we commit hooks. Now notice what you go on. Before this, before our code will be committed, just not, just take a look at what is happening on the command line here in our terminal. As you can see, this code is not committed. Now, if you want git status, git status, you see that we've not committed all of these changes to be committed. Changes to be committed. We've not committed all of this because our code has some errors. So. This npm run format, the this script executed this um script uh, this command and we got errors. So there's no way we commit this file. The, it exited with error code of one instead of zero, which is success. So let's actually remove this one, save the file, and run the command again. Git add everything and git commit. Pre commit hooks. Now notice what will happen in the terminal. Preparing this stage. Now, as you can see, then running tasks with stage files, applying modifications from tasks, cleaning up temporary files, and then to, after formatting everything, the list stage actually committed our code. So this is pre commit hooks. Apart from pre commit, that is pre, means our changes before committing our changes. Prettier, notice what is inside of this um, mid staged. 
Pretty right. That is pretty format everything. This 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 is actually um let's say regular expression. Pretty should format everything in our code except the ones we ignore in, in this we specify in this pretty ignore file that pretty should ignore. Else pretty should format everything in our project. Okay, so we have pre-commit hooks, we have pre-push. If you add another one here, which is pre-push. Okay, pre-push simply means after committing your code to Git, then you want to push it to GitHub. Before pushing, you want to run some things. Let's say you want to add pre-push, you create a file here, and you name it pre-push pre like this. And inside of this pre-push file, npm run test. But before that, come here, copy this. Because you want to make it executable, paste it. You yeah, remove this one. npm run test like this. And after committing, once you run, let's say npm git push, because we've already committed git push. It's okay. Why is it taking time? And it's taking a little bit of time. What's happening? It was already committed. Git I'm preparing this stage. Coming test. Um, and we have git push. And it's just there doing nothing. Okay, so the Husky pre push hook was ignored because it's not set as executable. You can disable this one in it, git config this the ignore hook. Okay, yes, because we did not set it as executable. But that's left for you to go learn how to do that and then set it as executable. And then after running this, before you push your code, and this, you cannot modify this in your project. Yours is to work because before any before you start working on any project, all these should be configured so that anytime you want to push your code, you run your tests because in most development environments, every feature must have a test. And especially um, development environments where TDD is required, test development environment, like test development um, environments where you need to write tests before you write code because if you write code without writing test and you have this in your pre-push pre um, hook, your pre-push um, file, your code will not be committed, except you have, because if you run the test and the test fails, it will fail to commit it to GitHub. You must write unit test for that uh, feature you have implemented. If, first of all, you write unit test, you push it, the unit test will fail. Then this, will, this code will not be pushed to GitHub. So you come back and write the code for that very feature. You, you refactor it to it matches what you want, uh, the, the, the feature you want. Then you push it, the test will pass, and then this will be pushed to GitHub. Okay, so that's great. We managed to implement pre commit hooks. Now, if you run git status, you see that contract files to include in what you committed to push, nothing added to work. You can actually come here. Make some changes like um, server is running on port like this. Then we say git status like this to decide to change it, modified source index.js. So we say git add, can say git add src slash index.js like this and run git status. You'll see that, okay, if Modify this and we've committed it. So we run git commit index. JS. Notice what will happen. Pritia will still format the whole of our code to make sure it, it meets the um the rules here, the rules specified in this feature RC. U tab, semi tab, bit, single quote, bracket spacing, and all of that. But so that's great. And now we can run git push. 
And as you can see, this is not set to executable. So it's warning you that this um, here in our pre push file, this will not execute because it's not set to executable. Okay. So let me show you something now. Let's ls, let's list the files, the folders. Now you cd to post key. This, and I will have pre commit and pre push. So what you want to do is ch mode plus x to push ls, great. Now you may be wondering what is ch mode plus x pre push? That's simply, that is change mode. And x is executed. That is, we want to change this file mode to executable. And you can use numbers like four, five, six, seven. Uh, that is scripting. If you need to learn a little bit of scripting, you want to, I use the command line to change this file to executable. So what I want to do is to go back, see slash um. And we are in our task manager. Let's come back to our index JS and remove, make some changes. Let's remove this one here, save the file. From git add let's commit index JS. Okay, Peter has done its work. So let's see if um, the test will be it's push. I will set the file to executable. Okay, error, not test specified. Cause keep pre push with exited the code one. Let's see that. This cannot be pushed to GitHub because no test specified. And I think the next item on our list here is um, you, um pre commit with added pre commit hooks and even pre push hooks. So now unit test supports, and we're going to be using Mocha. Is it Mocha or Mocha? Mocha, Mocha. Okay, we're going to be using Mocha and Chai. So what we do is npmi by z Mocha Chai auto complete. So I don't need to type most of this. You can go uh, customize your, your terminal like this so that you can increase productivity. Okay, so it's taking time, it's taking time. Now, if you check our package JSON file, we have a lot of things here. It's getting bigger and bigger. So in production, you see applications in production. They, they are way, their package JSON file is way bigger because of all this. And you can see script start, we have dev, we have build, we have test, we have format, we have preacher write. And if, let's say we want to format only the file, because we're we'll working regularly with files in the source directory. So what we want to do is, we want to format everything in the source directory, you see. MPA, um, Twitter, right, let's also slash everything in the source directory. So after installing this, we test that out, because your application will get bigger in such a way where you only want to format only the, in the source directory, you want to ignore all this one, but you'll be checking it on a regular basis. Sometimes you want to check, okay, are these formatted? You just want an NPS picture. Then you can, if they're not formatted, you can come to your terminal. Let's say run NPM run picture check. And everything is formatted. If in case, Everything is not formatted. You can manually run mpx picture dash dash write. That is format everything. Now you are not using the script in the package JSON. You are manually running this. You can see everything is being formatted. But if you run now, we specify that it only uh, the files in the source directory should be formatted. So you can come here and write ap and run picture write like this and see how now it's only the source everything in the source that is formatted 
and nothing outside of the source type. So that's the behavior we want. Okay, so what we will be waiting for? Okay, now the text. Inside of this text, we'll remove this and we we'll add mocha like this. Now npm run test. As you can see, zero passing, one minute, one millisecond, zero passing. Okay. So now let's come here and create a folder. What is this? Um, tests. I will add a file. Let's see. Index tests. JS and instead of this, we say import um expect from chai. I get an error. Expect is great, but value is never used. And if you declare a value without using it, you get an error. Except you come to your ES link and specify it. Otherwise, so in here you see describe this are uh, a test block. This is say testing mocha. I should take a function here and we say it should it's just for testing purpose. You take another function and inside you say expect. One dot to be true. This child should be listed in the project dependencies. Run npm is child to add it. Okay. Quick fix. Uh, also, this one describe is not defined. And for this should be added as um, an environmental variable. Now we have so many things to configure. You have to add, in order for these errors to go away, you come to your ES link here, you install the Mocha extension and all of this. So you have to come to this ES link JS, uh, JSON file and specify them in this array so that all these errors will go away. Okay, so now clear the terminal. Now run npm run test. Let's see if it pass. Oh, it's not passing. So is it test? Test. Let's change this to rename this to test. Tests. Okay. Aha. It's test and not test. Okay. Assertion error. Expected one to be true. So our test is failing. And as you can see here, we have testing mode here. And inside this test block, we have should be true. And should be true here, we're expecting one to be true. Let's, okay, let's come here and make this test to pass true. Run the test, one test. Hmm. Expect true, not the function, expect. Okay, let's say expect zero dot to streets dot to to equal let's say to equal one. Let's run it again. Run test. Okay, now testing mocha should be true. Assertion error expected zero to equal one. Expect the actual got zero uh, got one instead of zero. It should be one, not zero. Okay, so we'll come here and change this to zero. We we'll run the test again. NPM run test. Whoa, and it's now passing. Testing mocha should be true. Okay, let's see. Um one to be zero. Let's give it the title to match the test. Run it again. 
testing marker one to be zero. And our test is passing. So we can add another test in here. I can see instead of it, you can see test. And then we can add a description. We can see test the sum of one plus one. And give the function. Say expect one plus one to equal something I'm looking for. This got to let us see to equal. Three. Now let's run this test. Test is not defined. Okay. This is not just. This is more car run test. Okay. So now we have a total of two testing mocker one to be zero passed. The second one, the sum of one plus one, one is passing, one is failing. Testing mocker. Okay, so now we have one thing test. So let's clear our terminal and we add everything. Git commit and test testing worker. Let's enter. It has been work. And then i git push. And if I run git push, we'll wait for what's going to happen. The tests will run. Aha. So git push. And what is happening inside of our Husky file? If we push npm run test. So our th while running our tests, our session error, one test failed. So once you have a failing test, everything will go cabri. And you cannot push the code to your GitHub. I mean, to to, to, to the development branch or to your repository. So you come to the test file here. And what we do is we want to say one plus one to equal two. And we run our test, npm run test. Okay, so two tests passing. And we can come to this package JSON. We can specify, we want to watch our tests. So you can see mocker dash dash watch. Now run the test again. Let me run test. Oops, it's going to come in. Yes, module. Oh, I think this does not work in yes, eh? Try this. So, SM. I'm getting a cabling again. We got ESM module. Don't see this. Okay. We we'll fix that next, but not now. So now we we'll say git add everything. Git push. No, git commits. Nothing to push actually. Git commits. Testing marker. And git push. Okay, so now we can see git push and our test run, two test pass, and everything, and everything has been pushed to GitHub. So, can you see? And one funny thing about this is if you try to modify this, your development environment, and you push to the development branch, there's a reviewer. And the reviewer is a is, is your senior at your place of work. So the reviewer will review your code. And if you discover that you modify anything in this course key folder or anywhere, that's a problem. You may actually lose your job or you know what happens next? A very big problem. So today we only learn how to integrate Mocha. I mean Mocha with our application, but then we are not going to be writing any tests. We'll do that in our next class. Let's add as well NPMID super 
tests. We'll be using this to test our controllers. That is our request, the request in our applications. It's taking a little bit of, of time. So today is that a review. As you can see, all these are development dependencies. The chai, the ESLINKs, ESLINK config, Airbnb base, ESLINK plugin imports, Horsky, Linstate, Mocha, Node1, Twitter. All these are actually development dependencies, and we have our script. We start the dev, the build, test, format, feature write, feature check, prepare. And all of this, this is awesome. Now we're getting this error here. You can actually disable this. And here, you can disable it. Here, you can also disable it finished. Now that we've not, yes, link, disable next line, no undefined. Okay. Let's move to our packages into our ES links. No. Okay. To be off for the sake of our test here. So let's remove this. 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 Okay. So this one is saying. Child should be listed as a NPRS child. It's let's disable that for this line. We don't want to run that. So we can run NPM save. Oh, the A is for save. That is I save. No, no, no. It's NPM I dash D dash S child. What also is that is at a development dependency. Okay, so now let's remove this. It's the same thing. So why this? Let's just deal with this error. Okay, and we are done. Now yes, needs the specified rules. And if you go with you, let's comment this out. Save your file. Come back to your file, and you're getting errors. Come to your ESLint yes, file and comment it. Add a comma here. And this is great. Everything goes away instantly. Okay, so in review for today, um, what we've done for today so far, we've learned how to enforce uniform coding style with commit styles and branching. We've also learned how to enforce development practices with Twitter and ESLint. We've also learned about pre-commit hooks, and we also learned how to integrate unit tests in our application and all our tests will be written in this folder this test so NPM test, mock.js. So we just learned how to write. We're using chai for um, our sessions. Chai is actually an assertion library that we can use to write tests. We have expects, we have like, um, should, we have should expect, um, let's say should, expect to, we send something like expect to send satisfied C screen to screen is has all of that. In our next class, we'll be writing unit tests for, for our controllers. And we'll see how we can write unit tests for all our controllers and how we can integrate it with Docker and Kubernetes and other things. Other things. Right now, as you can see, we are not actually writing code. Let's assume we are done writing code for application and all we are doing now is what we're supposed to do. All these are not done after writing code. 
the reason why I'm using this to build on top of this is just for teaching purpose. All these are supposed to be done before you write a single code. You are supposed to set up prettier ES links, tests, and everything before you even write a single line of code. So be aware, be aware of that. And the prettier uh, website is there for you. you. Can always visit it if you want to check out um, how to set up prettier and all of that or ES links. Uh, ES links just install that extension and then run npx ES links dash dash initiate or initialize or something like that. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask. Okay, so in absence of any questions, we end today's uh, class and call it to be. We'll meet in our next class.